Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. Um, I'm answering a question uh, from the May June 2021 IGCSE Cambridge Paper 40580. This is uh, Paper 4, Variant 1, Paper 4 1 from May June 2021. And this question here is about mensuration, volume, surface areas, and so on. So part A, here we have a solid cone and a solid hemisphere. Okay, the cone has a radius of 2.4 centimeters and a slant height of 6.3 centimeters. The hemisphere has a radius of R centimeters, capital R centimeters. The total surface area of the cone is equal to the total surface area of the hemisphere. All right, calculate the value of R. So now, again, when they put something in bold type, there's, you should always think to yourself, why did they put it in bold type, right? And the important thing for us to realize is that they're going to give us some information. The curved surface area of the cone is pi r l, and the curved surface area of a sphere with radius r is 4 pi r squared. So the area of the curved part of this cone is pi r l. But you also have, because it's solid, all right, and that's why it says solid here, and that's why this is in bold. You also have the base. This is also part of the surface of this shape because it's a solid cone. So you're going to have the area of the base, which is pi r squared. All right. That's the area for this cone, the total surface area. Okay. And for the hemisphere, you have 4 pi r squared is the total surface area of a complete square. Now, this is a half a square. So you're going to have two times pi r squared and i'm going to put r as this r here because they're given the radius in terms of this r all right but you also again have this as part of the surface because it's solid so you're going to have plus pi r squared which is that circle so the surface area of a hemisphere is going to be three times pi r squared that's the surface area of a hemisphere when it's solid okay so that's really what we have to be careful about here so we know that these two are equal to each other Right, that I know that these two things are equal to each other. So the surface area of the cone, the total surface area, which is pi r times the slant height plus pi r squared, is equal to the total surface area of the hemisphere. So we can just put the values in now. We know that r is 2.4. So pi times 2.4 times l, which is 6.3. Plus pi times, I should say 3 pi r squared, sorry. Pi times 2.4 squared is equal to 3 times pi times r squared, which is what we have to find. So we don't know what that is. 3 pi times, 3 pi times r squared. Okay, so that should give us our answer. So basically we can divide both sides. Well, we can get rid of the pi's. All right, so we're going to have we're going to have two point four times six point three plus two point four squared over three, and you find the square root of that, and that's going to give you r. Okay, so divide both sides by three and take the, take the square root. So r will be equal to this. So let's take our calculator and let's put the square root of for fraction two point four times six point three plus 2.4 squared divided by 3. And that gives us root 174.5. Okay, which, if you write this in its, third, in its uh, decimal form, 2.6381. 2.6381. So, do they tell us how to round it? No, so we have to round it to 3SF, which is 2.64. Okay, that's two point R is two point six four. Okay, in centimeters. We just can write R the R is there, so it's two point six four. That's the answer to part A of this question. All right. So the important thing here is to realize that these are solid, so you must include the bases of them. All right, now part B, three part B. It says the diagram shows a solid cone of radius seven point six centimeters and you see the vertical height is sixteen centimeters. And a cut is made parallel to the base of the cone 
and the top section is removed. The remaining solid has a height of 12 centimeters, as shown in the diagram. Calculate the volume of the remaining solid. Okay, so now this is a type of question where you have to use similarity. All right, and what you do is you imagine what the cone was before it was removed. So I'm going to just use this diagram here to help me. So this, this part has been removed. Okay, this part has been removed. All right. And what we need to do is we need to find, okay, the volume of this part. If I take the volume of the whole thing and take away the volume of this part that was removed, I'm left with the volume of what we need. All right. So to find the volume of the cone, we need two things. We need the vertical height. Okay, we need the vertical height and we need the radius. Now the vertical height is no problem here. Okay, so for this cone, the vertical height of this cone should be no problem because it's basically simply uh, this, this, this vertical height of this cone is 16 minus 12, which is 4. So that's 4 centimeters, the height of this cone. What we need to know is the radius of this cone. Okay, so what we can do is we can compare it to the the whole the whole cone. So we can basically make a pair of um, rectangles from this. Okay, there's actually two ways of doing this. Actually. There's actually two ways of doing this. Okay, what I can do is I could also use similarity. In fact, I'll show you two ways. I'll show you one way using similarity in terms of volume and the other one in terms of length. Okay, let, let's look at the, the volume one. I think the volume one is 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 probably going to be the more simple one. Right, so I know that this, this shape is similar to this shape. This cone, this small cone, is similar to the whole cone. They're similar to each other, right? So I know the volume of the main cone, the big cone, okay? And I know the height of the main cone, and I, I know the height of the small cone. The height of the small cone is, is 4. So I have two shapes which are similar. So I can, I'll just redraw them here to make it clear. So I know that this shape is the whole cone, and this shape is the small cone, right? I know they're similar shapes. Okay, I know the height of this cone, and I know the height of this cone. I know the radius of this cone. I don't know the radius of this cone. But what I can do from, from terms of volume, this is 16 centimeters. And this is 7.6 centimeters. And here I have 4 centimeters, as we mentioned, because it's going to be 16 minus this 12, leaves you with that 4. And that's 7.6 centimeters. And, and this, we don't know what this is, this R. All right. <clears throat> so what I need to do is find the volume of this, this, this part here. Okay, so if I do this minus that, the volume of this minus that, I get the volume of what I need. Okay, so that take away this, not minus, not, not equals. This take away that will give me this volume, right? That's what I'm looking for. So I know the volume of the, of the big cone. The volume of the, the whole cone is going to be a third times pi times r squared, which is 7.6 squared, times the vertical height, which is 16. 16 is the vertical height. Okay, so let, let's work out what that is. And I'll leave it in terms of pi to make it easier. So 1 over 3 times 7.6 squared times 16. So that's going to give me, I'll, put, I'll leave it in this, in this form, 23,104 over 75, 23,104 over 75 pi. Okay, that's the volume of the whole cone. Now, the volume of the small cone, the volume of the small cone, I can use, I can find by using the ratio of the lengths. I know that the ratio of the lengths, if I'm looking for the volume of the smaller one, is going to be 4 over 16. Okay, that's the ratio of the lengths, but I want to find the ratio of the volume, so I've got to cube this, okay, and multiply it by my original volume. Okay, so this is the volume of the main cone. This is the scale factor for the length, 4 over 16. When I cube it, it will give me the scale factor for the volume. I want to find the volume of the smaller one. That's why I put smaller over bigger. So that will give me the volume of the smaller cone using similarity. Okay, using similarity with volumes. So I take my last answer, and if I multiply that by 4 over 16, which is the same as 1 quarter, 
but cubed because that's the ratio of the length. I want the ratio of the volumes. So I'm going to cube this. That will give me 361 over 75 pi. Okay, so that's the volume of the small cone. And that's the volume of the big cone. This is the volume that we want. Okay, the total volume we want is 23,104 pi over 75 minus 361 pi over 75. So that's going to give me my answer that I'm looking for. So I have this. So I have... Um, This I'll store as A. And um, this I'll store as B. Okay, so I have B minus A then. So I'm going to put recall B minus A. Okay, that will give me 7,581 7, over 25. 7,581 over 25 pi, which then I round to 3SF. I just put times pi. And then I can put SD. And it gives me 952.656. 952.656 goes on. Now what we can do here is we can round it to, doesn't say, so 3SF. So 953 centimeters cubed. I'll also show you how to do this in the... The other way that I was going to show you, um, that way you can find what the radius is. So we can use the same diagram here. We want to find what R is. I know by similarity that R over 7.6 will be the same ratio as 4 over 16. So R is going to be 4 times 7.6 over 16. Okay, so we can work out the radius. So 4 times 7.6 divided by 16, that will give us... 1.9 so that's the radius of this small cone so then i can say the volume of the big cone so i can say that 1 over 3 times pi times 16 times 7.6 so uh, pi pi sorry what am i doing a third times pi times r which is 7.6 squared times 16 minus a third times pi times r which is 1.9 we found 1.9 squared times 4 and that should give us exactly the same answer we just found let's see so we have 1 over 3 times pi times 7.6 squared times 16 minus 1 over 3 times pi times 1.9 squared times 4. And that gives us exactly the same answer as we see. 7581 over 25 pi, which gives us the same answer, of course. So you can do it by using similarity with length, finding the radius, and then using the volume formula, putting finding the volume of the big cone, and take away the volume of the smaller cone, leaving you with the truncated cone. Or you can find the volume of the smaller cone straight away by using similarity with volume. You can find the volume of this, use the scale factor of length as 1 over 4 qubit, multiply by the original volume, that gives you the volume of the smaller cone, and subtract those two volumes, and it leaves you with the volume of the part that's left behind. So whichever way you do it, you end up with this same answer. So that's number part B of question number i think it was three of this paper may june 2021 okay so here we have this uh, these questions to do with similarity and also menstruation um areas surface areas volumes okay all those um topics involved in this particular or these two questions okay so i hope that was clear thank you for watching and see you soon